And in today's episode, among other things, you'll see. It's impressive to see a robot head displaying facial expressions so realistic that it even scares people who know it's a robot. In the future, robots will claim humans hit me to justify themselves. Watch a video of a Chinese humanoid robot undergoing an extreme violence test. The United Kingdom presents the world's fastest developing humanoid robot, the thin screen or luminescent technology which makes images float before our eyes has just become available for purchase. In the United States, a robot factory the size of a dog carrier learns to assemble electronics just by observing humans. Let's check all of that out. Hello, impressed viewers. I'm Carlos Alves, and you're watching Incredible Reality. Without further ado, let's get to the video, video, video and a recently published video on YouTube left the tech community in a mix of outrage and astonishment. Unitree, a leading Chinese robotics firm, puts its humanoid robot G1 through a violence test, making the scene resemble a dystopian movie. The humanoid is kicked repeatedly, it staggers, slips, and even falls, but gets up in less than a second, defying expectations about the resilience of these machines. The G1 is known for its compact, flexible structure. But the video also showed something random, beyond its near-human reflexes under extreme force. Throughout the clip, the robot takes about nine direct kicks. To be honest, that's almost a flying kick. Not to say it actually is a flying kick. He's not great at kicking, but that's fine since they're approaching from different directions. Rather than locking up or breaking, the robot holds its posture, briefly wobbles, then regains balance. It only hits the ground once due to the slippery carpet, but recovers immediately, and that ends up becoming the most impressive moment of the demonstration. The reaction was immediate. In the comments, internet users mixed humor and warnings. When the masters of artificial intelligence arrive, this guy will be the first to go six feet under. Is he going to put on the wooden suit? That was the way one of the internet users found to make fun of the scene. Another one wrote the following. Remember, one day, these robots will also watch these videos. Beneath the jokes, it's clear there's a sense of something that sparks the imagination. Machines that take abuse and keep going, whatever your opinion, hold on. There's cutting edge science behind the spectacle. The G1 is equipped with permanent magnet synchronous motors in its joints. That's what lets it make micro adjustments quickly. A dual encoder system provides real time feedback managed by a whole body control framework. All the robot's joints work together as a dynamic organism, not in isolation. To quote, sense the environment. It uses a 3D LiDAR depth cameras and an inertial measurement unit. Inertial measurement unit, thus creating an internal model of the steps around it. UNITRI's artificial intelligence using imitation and reinforcement learning enhances this combination. Simply put, G1 observes human actions such as martial arts or dance steps, and from that it refines its own movements. It's not surprising that earlier videos already showed it doing spinning kicks and moves similar to human athletes' choreography. This so-called violence test follows a tradition. It's not something new in robotics, from the classic test by Aston Dynamics with their Atlas robot, to the resilience test that Honda used to do with the classic Asimo. Engineers have always subjected their humanoids to adverse situations to prove their balance and durability. UNITRI, however, is going a bit further. No, no. They want to show the G1, though, cheaper and more accessible than competitors, can match them in agility and robustness. In other words, they want to show that the robot is strong enough to withstand the challenges of our daily lives. In the end, the scene, which might look like just a robot taking a beating, is actually a milestone. It shows that the line between fragile machines and truly resilient partners is quickly narrowing. G1 showed that it can fall, but also that it can get back up. And maybe that's exactly what scares and fascinates us the most at the same time, isn't it? Now imagine a future where electricity isn't lost, but is literally bottled and delivered on demand. Okay, I know there are going to be a lot of jokes about this topic, but I'm asking you, please don't bring politics into it, okay? This idea wants science fiction is now becoming reality in South Korea, where scientists achieved the country's first liquid air energy storage, which is capable of producing 10 tons per day. The Korea Institute of Machinery and Materials, Korea Institute of Machinery and Materials, conducted the research. The principle is ingenious. When the grid has excess energy, air is cooled to cryogenic temperatures, turning into liquid. Liquid air is stored in special tanks and reheated when demand rises. The air expands to about 700 times its original volume, 
creating enough pressure to move turbines and generate electricity. The heart of the system consists of two innovations developed entirely in Korea, a turbo expander that spins at more than 100,000 revolutions per minute, and a cold box equipped with multi-layer insulation and extreme vacuum, which is capable of keeping the air at freezing temperatures. It was the first time the country managed to liquefy and store air with fully domestic technology, a crucial step for the guys to reduce their external dependence. The impact goes far beyond simply storing energy. Unlike traditional methods such as pumped storage, hydroelectric plants, or compressed air caverns, which depend on geography and can cause environmental impacts, liquid air storage can be built practically anywhere, from dense cities to industrial hubs. In addition, the extreme cold can be used for industrial cooling, while waste heat from factories can be reused in the process itself, greatly increasing efficiency. This advancement puts South Korea in a global race, where countries like the United Kingdom, China, and the United States are already competing. But the difference here is that it's an entirely domestic development, aligned with the strategic plan to create a true renewable energy superhighway across Korean territory. It's too soon for large-scale application, okay? 10 tons per day seems pretty small compared to national demand, but the proof of concept is already very clear. Bottling electricity could be one of the cleanest, safest, and most flexible solutions for the future of global energy. And a new milestone in the global robotics race has just been announced in London. Humanoid, a young company founded last year, has launched the HMND-01 Alpha, the United Kingdom's first industrial humanoid robot. It's more than a prototype. It shows Britain's ambition to become a leader in this strategic sector. The achievement is impressive due to the speed. It took just seven months to build the initial model. Alpha was built for logistics, retail, and manufacturing, handling complex tasks autonomously, standing nearly 2.2 meters tall with wheels. It can carry over 15 kilograms and move at 7.2 kilometer a chest. It efficiently covers a warehouse or factory as well as a whole human team. The core of this machine is NVIDIA's Jetson store platform called the Real Robotic Brain. This architecture lets the humanoid run multiple artificial intelligence streams simultaneously, combining generative models, simulations, and continuous learning in dynamic environments. It's not just a robot that executes commands, but a system that thinks, adapts, and decides in real time, adjusting its behavior according to the people and the environment around it. The British team also used NVIDIA's Isaac Sim and Cosmos tools to create synthetic data and realistic simulations. This means that Alpha can be trained in millions of virtual situations before being placed in a real warehouse minimizing risks and speeding up learning. Besides the wheeled logistics version, there's also a biped model for future consumers. Both were designed to navigate tight spaces, such as supermarket aisles or factories, and even in homes where agility, precision, and autonomous decision-making are crucial. Alpha offers 29 degrees of freedom and interchangeable end effectors, from a precise five-fingered hand to a powerful gripper. Equipped with 360-degree red, green, blue cameras and dual depth sensors, it can thoroughly identify and handle objects on shelves from floor level to two meters high. For the humanoid, that prototype is just the beginning of everything. Industrial feedback will shape the next model, the Beta, expected as early as 2026 with improved capabilities. The announcement is more than technical, it's strategic. It shows the United Kingdom aims to unite academic research, global capital, and startup culture to compete with China and the United States. And a video of just two minutes was enough to put South Korea in the spotlight of the robotics scene. Researchers from the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, released footage of a humanoid robot, or at least half of it, which not only runs at high speed, but also masters iconic dance moves, like the moonwalk by Michael Jackson, and even the curious duck walk. The demonstration starts with an impressive sequence. The robot smoothly slides backward, imitating Michael's legendary dance move. Soon after, it speeds up its pace, going from a normal rhythm of 0.98 meters per second to a run that reaches up to 3.3 meters per second. That's equivalent to about 12 kilometers per hour. For a humanoid that's 1.65 meters tall and weighs 75 kilograms, these numbers reveal not only strength, but also a refined balance that, until now, seemed exclusive to human athletes and, more recently, to slightly more advanced machines. And the performance doesn't stop there. In resilience tests, the robot is pushed, 
briefly loses balance but quickly stabilizes and returns to its path without falling. This kind of quick response is considered essential for industrial or urban environments, where unpredictability is the rule. It's not unusual. Another notable point is blind walking. This humanoid uses only internal sensors and an artificial intelligence controller with no cameras or vision sensors. Still, it handles obstacles, steps, and rough terrain naturally. Showing that coordination gained in virtual simulations can transfer successfully to real life. And in an almost theatrical display, the robot bends its knees deeply to imitate the famous duck walk. It also performs coordinated, stiff-legged jumps, showing dynamic control and precision in propulsion. Traits rare even among top humanoids. A reinforcement learning algorithm trained in virtual environments made this possible by helping bridge the gap between simulation and reality. The result is artificial intelligence control that can replicate complex and artistic movements in the physical world. HubLab, led by Ukaishi, will present the project at Humanoids 2025, a major international robotics conference. Researchers say the next step is expanding the humanoid's abilities to handle tasks while walking, like carrying objects, pushing carts, or climbing stairs. The line between human movement and robotic movement is becoming increasingly blurred. Combining the advances we've discussed so far with what's coming next, we can already make a statement. At least I believe the future has arrived. My friends, let's see. Pay attention to this segment here. Let me remove my glasses to add some drama. A simple blink of an eye. A simple blink of an eye might seem trivial to us humans, but when it comes from a machine, it can be something unsettling. You can see it in this image here. Look at these images here. Yeah, that's exactly the feeling from this new video by the Chinese company Aheadform, which introduced its head humanoid robotics, capable of reproducing facial expressions with a realism that is surprising and even fools those who know a lot about robotics. You can see in the video that the robot looks around with an intrigued expression, and it blinks so naturally that many viewers felt uncomfortable. A mix of fascination and strangeness. The startup's goal is clear. To bring humans and robots closer together through emotion. Or at least through the emulation of emotion. No, it's not. The project is not just a technological curiosity, but a decisive step toward a future where humans and machines will be able to communicate more naturally. The startup made it clear that its goal extends far beyond mechanical engineering. It's about creative robots that understand nonverbal cues and interact engagingly. Now, picture that logic combined with ultra silent motors, advanced sensors, and an artificial intelligence brain coordinating everything in real time. That's how this robotic head can convincingly simulate or reproduce emotions. The technical result is impressive with 30 facial degrees of freedom, featuring brushless motors for smooth motion, fast response, and lower energy use. In addition, the Elf series from the company, does it really remind you of the Lord of the Rings? It depicts faces with fantastical traits like large stylized ears, yet maintains realism that creates both strangeness and fascination. The most intriguing moment comes at the demonstration's climax. The robotic head not only imitates human gestures, but also conveys the sensation of thinking and reacting in an authentic way. The gaze that follows the environment, the blinking that happens at just the right moment, and the lip-syncing with speech all strongly reinforce the illusion of presence. As if you were facing a hybrid being between man and machine, this advancement opens up a deep reflection. If robots can convincingly express emotions like this, it will change our relationship with machines. Could it be that in the future, an interaction with a robot could be indistinguishable from a conversation with a real person? And to what extent can our perception of empathy be fooled by an artificial system that was programmed and well-programmed? Here's the point. A-I-R-E-D-F-O-R-M reveals that the line between human and artificial is getting very thin. And maybe sooner than we imagine, we'll have robots not only working by our side, but living with us on an emotional level, if we can put it that way. So what did you think about that? Tell me down here. Imagine a screen as thin as a picture frame, but capable of bringing images to life that seem to jump out of the physical space, almost as if they were really there, right in front of our eyes. This is the proposal of Looking Glass Factory, a New York company whose mission is to make glasses free holograms an everyday reality. The new hololuminescent display, under 2.5 cml or thick, can show videos and animations with depth that pushes perceptual limits. I'm not just referring to high resolution like 4K or 8K, 
but to visuals where objects appear to float, visible from multiple angles and to several people at once. Picture a museum artifact shown in 3D rotating, or a digital character guiding visitors through a gallery to illustrate the impact. The feeling is as if our physical space is being invaded by tangible digital presences. These displays range from 16 to 86 inches and start at $2,000. They will cost around $20,000. What's interesting is how this technology creates an almost magical sense of presence without needing glasses or extra devices. Yeah, my friends, maybe in a short time, our eyes won't even be able to tell what's inside or outside the screen anymore. What's in our world is in the world of machines. Yeah, that day is coming. Picture opening a dog carrier-sized box to find a small factory inside able to precisely assemble complex electronics. Micro Factory, a San Francisco startup, is gaining global attention with its bold proposal, a general-purpose desktop robotic system. The idea is simple and powerful, to automate repetitive manual tasks that currently take up time and require extreme human attention. Such tasks include assembling circuit boards, soldering, routing cables, and inserting screws or handling adhesive tape. The difference lies in the training method. Rather than complex programming, a person simply guides the robotic arms by showing them the task. And that's how it learns. Igor Kulakov, Microfactory's co-founder and chief executive officer, said the choice was clear. General purpose robots are good, but they don't need to be humanoid. We decided to design robots from scratch, which will still be general purpose robots, but without a humanoid form. This way, Everything becomes simpler, both in hardware and in terms of artificial intelligence. The first prototype took only five months to build, and today the startup already promises to deliver machines capable of performing multiple tasks at an affordable cost, thus offering a practical alternative to industrial humanoids. And it's more than just a futuristic gadget. This little box promises to be the beginning of a silent revolution, compact, decentralized and low-cost factories that any company or even regular people in their homes will be able to scale for automation without needing gigantic industrial assembly lines. So do you think that in the future, every home or business will really have its own portable micro factory to assemble anything on demand? I don't know. Maybe assembling your own PC at home. Not just assembling the PC, right? Assembling the parts of your PC at home. Something tells me we'll have an answer soon on Rally Dade. Make sure you're subscribed, okay? You don't want to miss any tech news, right? And if you liked what you saw in this episode, do you want to study a little deeper? All sources are listed in the description. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Just click on the suggestion that will appear on your screen in a moment. Or maybe it's already there. There are two suggestions. Click there, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for sticking with me until now, all right? But I need you to leave a comment. So, go ahead and comment. China created the most realistic humanoid robot face. Leave a comment to help me out. Thanks. Bye.